Ladies and Gentlemen, Dame und Gastverein, meine Damen und Herren, willkommen in der Köln Arena. Welcome to the main event of the evening, the rematch presented by K2 Promotions and broadcast by RTL and HBO, sponsored by O2 and sanctioned by the GBO. This contest is scheduled for 12 rounds of boxing for the IBF, IBO, heavyweight championship of the world. IBF President Marion Mohammed, IBO President Ed Levine. At ringside, the three judges scoring this bout on the 10-point system. From South Africa, Alfred Bukwana. From Germany, Michael Fischer. From the United States, Denny Nelson. And inside the ring, also from the United States, the referee in charge of the action, Sam Williams. And now, for the thousands in attendance and the millions watching around the world. Ladies and gentlemen, meine Damen und Herren, let's get ready to rumble! <laughs> Fighting out of the red corner, wearing gold, official weight. 103.5 kilograms, 228 pounds. His professional record, an outstanding one, consisting of 36 bouts, 33 victories, including 28 knockouts with three defeats. From Indianapolis, Indiana, USA, the challenger, former WBO heavyweight world champion, relentless Lehman Bruce. Fighting out of the blue corner, wearing red, trimmed with gold. Official weight, 110.5 kilograms, 243 one-half pounds. This gold medal Olympic champion now has a professional record of 51 bouts, 48 victories, including 43 knockouts with three defeats. Fighting out of Hamburg, Germany, by way of Kiev, Ukraine. The two-time world champion and reigning Defending IBF, IBO heavyweight champion of the world, Dr. Steel Hammer, Vladimir Klitschko. I got something wrong, people. Tail of the tape for Vladimir Klitschko and Lehman Brewster. Brewster now 34 years old, gives up five inches in height. One inch only, though, arm length measured from the armpit to the end of the fist. Lehman Brewster at 228, only two pounds north of where he fought Klitschko three years ago, and perhaps the best shape he has been in since that time. Klitschko, as always, superbly conditioned, 6'6", 243 and a half. Rules of the bout, whether unofficial ringside scorer, Harold Letterman. Unified rules, no three knockdown rule, only the referee can start the fight. Go to the scorecards on a cut after four rounds, and you cannot be saved by the bell in any round, including the 12th and final round. Jim. Yeah. Referee Sam Williams of Detroit. Right, let's have a bit of We went over the rules in the locker room. I'm going to give you a few reminders. I want you to watch your head, butt, your low blows, your kidney punches. On my command to break, take a full step back, hands up, protect yourself at all times. In case of a knockdown, I send you to the furthest neutral corner. Remain there until I send for you. Good luck, man. Raymond Brewster fought the first fight like a condemned man who wound up executing the executioner. At 34, can he fight that kind of willful fight again if he has to? Round 
Vladimir Klitschko stood all the way in the center of the ring waiting for the opening bell. He told us yesterday he expects Lehman Brewster to rush him in the first minute of the fight, much the way Brewster rushed Andrew Galata and knocked him out in 53 seconds. Brewster bulls Klitschko back against the ropes. I thought it was a little bit strange, Lennox, that he came right out after Brewster was trying to make a statement. No, what he did was just went to the center of the ring and say, okay, this is my spot. I'm not giving up this spot. I'm, I'm in control of this fight, so I'm in control of the center of the ring. So both men have made psychological statements as Brewster did make something of a rush and wound up more or less attempting to tackle Klitschko, and Vladimir established a spatial imperative by standing at the center of the ring and his firing jabs, and he just threw a right hand over the top. Remember, in his last title defense, two rounds against Ray Austin of Cleveland, he never unleashed the right hand, knocking out Austin with a series of left hooks. Which goes long jab, utterly dominant in the first three rounds of their first fight. He looks a tiny bit more cautious tonight. But of course, the style since then, Lennox, has been partially one of conserving energy. Well, he's definitely conserving energy. He's doing the right thing, which is starting everything off with a jab. Layman Brusso, however, he's trying to find a way in, maybe a bit too flat-footed right now, but he's not getting hit. But later on, it, it, may, it may show. Sam Williams uses the word holding. Brewster's corner, no doubt, has said to Williams before the fight, Klitschko holds us. We don't want Vladimir to be able to hold here. If I notice anything different that Brewster's attempting, it's to jab his way to the inside. Brewster's using that side to head motion, which is very good defensive motion, but the only thing is he's standing still in that one spot because Vladimir can time him like a clock, you know, when he moves to one side, to the other side, time him like a clock, and then all of a sudden that right hand comes, or that left hook right hand. Klitschko turned his head to slip a Brewster right hand, now lands a one-two over the top. Goes back to throwing his jab, and stuns Brewster momentarily with a solid right hand. Good right hand, but Vladimir elects to hold after, which he doesn't need to do at this point, and I hope he doesn't get into that holding early because I'm sure the referee's Stop looking out for that. Right. Stop holding the champ. Sam Williams says stop holding champ, calling Klitschko champ, and Klitschko goes back to pumping the left jab. Now hooking off the jab, something he does better than any other heavyweight at this moment. A very good punch to throw. What it does is it gives the opponent something else to, to look at than, than the jab. They see a left hook coming across and you know, it keeps them busy, mentally. First half, but he was in it. And keep working on the hook. Keep working on the hook, and then you'll set him up for the right hand. Uh, either the little, when he starts jabbing, mm -hmm. straight back and straight right hand, okay? Don't try to shoot it all the time, one, two. Try to get him to jab it straight, same as you want. Still standing in one spot. Like your feet are stuck in one place. You got to keep pushing him back. All right, don't stand there. Okay, let's go, baby. Keep that head moving like you're doing, but keep the left hand up a little more. Yeah, this is Klitschko, you know, just measuring, throwing out that jab, and as you can see, Brewster's just flat-footed, trying to figure out a way in. Connecting with that jab right now. And obviously after the jab comes that right hand. Heavyweight average for throwing jabs is about 19 per round. Klitschko in the first round by CompuBox count landed 21 of 46 jabs. Brewster also, as Larry Merchant pointed out, trying to use his own jab through 31, landed seven. You heard Buddy McGirt saying to Brewster, you've got to keep going forward, keep pushing him back. The feeling in Brewster's corner is that Klitschko can't fight going backward. Emmanuel Stewart, following up on the, what Lennox and I were talking about, asked Klitschko to continue hooking off the left jab, saying that would set up the right hand. See, at this point, Brewster's just worried about the jab right now, and that's all he has to worry about. But when Klitschko throws that left hook in there, it gives him something else to worry about. And obviously, the right hand follows, which makes it a great combination.
Klitschko able to control Lehman Brewster at this range with his longer, more accurate left jab. And so far, it's a jabbing contest in round two, predictably won by Klitschko. You know, Brewster at this point shouldn't allow him to do that much jab without doing some jabbing of his, of, of his own. Because when, when Vitaly, when Vladimir. Vladimir, when Vladimir starts landing with that jab, that right hand's gonna come across, and that's his honey punch. Lennox Lewis, of course, fought six rounds with older brother Vitaly Klitschko in Los Angeles and fought about, oh, 20 seconds with Vladimir in Ocean's 11. Rooster missing with both the right and the left. He has not been able to get close enough to Klitschko to do damage in round two. Well, how he's going to get close to Klitschko is definitely throwing his left jab, starting everything with the jab, but he's got to move those feet. He's got to move those feet a lot quicker. Klitschko right. now backing Brewster into a corner after a left hook, right cross combination. What I notice most about Klitschko is that he's a little bit more measured than he was in the first rounds of the earlier fight. What I notice is greater offensive variety. He's thrown a right-hand lead, maybe a couple of them. Hasn't yet unveiled the uppercut. The jabbing, hooking off the jab, occasionally leading with the right hand. He's becoming a more well-rounded fighter, Lennox, offensively. Yes, he is, and he's, and he's using that distance. He's keeping enough distance between him and Brewster to keep to, to, so he can land his jab, but Brewster can't land his jab. Which is, which is great measuring on his part. It's been a masterful boxing exhibition in round two. Vladimir Klitschko thoroughly controlling the space between himself and an offensively impotent Lehman Brewster. Let's get back to the jab. The jab is breaking in the two. And sooner or later, you're going to land the right hand. Once he keeps getting dizzy from the jab, the right hand will automatically find his way. The best if you would catch him when he starts trying to come to you and then throw the right. I keep telling you. Let's stay low and to the right, Lehman. Okay, what you're doing is you're, he's touching with jabs and putting your head in. You're getting right in the final line on the right hand. No good, baby. Right. Stay over here. Come on, Lehman. What we worked on? Now, let's not let her go out the window. Okay? Hey, hey, hey. Look at me. Let's not let it go out the window, baby. Okay. Let's stop working the body. Don't worry about his head. After Klitschko's first two losses, his brother Vitaly had his back and beat the guys who beat him, Purity and Sanders. This is the first time that Klitschko has his own back trying to beat a fighter who beat him. A lot of people expected Vladimir to very consciously slow the pace tonight to avoid the exhaustion that befell him in the first fight. But by CompuBox numbers, in round two, Vladimir Klitschko threw and landed more punches than in any round previously counted by CompuBox. He landed 35 punches in the second round. 28 of them were jabs. Brewster, 12 of 43, but his offense is muffled mostly by the Klitschko action. Well, you heard Brewster say, if it's a boxing contest, he wins. If it's a fight, I win. So far, he's been unable to make it a fight. Vladimir winding up, looking to land that right hand, just looking for that opening. But before that, he's peppering Brewster with that left jab. Still, Brewster's so flat-footed, he needs to move a lot quicker on his feet to get into distance and get into punching distance so he can hit, hit Vladimir. Brewster is going to the body per the instructions of his corner, but it's not very often and not very effective. Vladimir threw another right hand lead seconds ago. He'll never be the world's most relaxed fighter, Lennox, but I honestly believe this is the most relaxed I've seen him in the ring in a competitive fight. He looks, he looks, he looks relaxed to me. He looks like he's trying to set Bruce up for that right hand, but first, you know, he's trying to pepper him up with that jab. And the 
determination of Lehman Brewster always evident, always apparent. There's another right-hand lead by Vladimir Klitschko. And you heard Emmanuel Stewart between rounds saying, time him so that you land that right hand when he's coming in. Bottom line is, as Buddy McGirt pointed out, Brewster isn't coming in as much as he promised he would. Right, and therefore there are fewer clinches already than in the first fight. And then there was an average of about six clinches per round. At that time, Vladimir doubled up on the right hand lead. And this time lands a one-two. And now hooks off the jab again. And Lehman Brewster is getting the full Klitschko arsenal as round three continues. You know, Bruce, Brewster is definitely coming away from something that worked for him in the first fight, and that's pressure. He's not giving Vladimir enough pressure to really give him anything to worry about. Brewster has landed one left hook in this round, otherwise nothing meaningful. Klitschko has continued to pepper him with jabs. And now Vladimir backs straight away from a leaping left hook. And Brewster looks tired as he goes to his corner between three and four. Okay, listen to me. You can't stand in front of this guy and get hit with them shots. Saturday, July 14, a welterweight triple header. Champion Antonio Margarito faces Paul Williams in Los Angeles. While in Atlantic City, Arturo Gatti takes on Alfonso Gomez of contender fame. And Kermit Cintron defends his belt against Walter Matisse. Immediately following, live coverage of boxing. Stay tuned for the premiere of Countdown to Hopkins Wright. Our behind-the-scenes look at both fighters as they prepare for their July 21 battle live on pay-per-view. Guess what he saw us doing forward? He's all out of position. Just hit the straight right hand go, you're catching. You're fighting a good fight, though. Your left hand is working. Now, this is Klitschko setting Bruce up for that right hand, and, you know, what came before that was a whole heap of jabs. Okay, I'm not going to let you get hit too much more, you understand me? Okay, let's go now. Copy box numbers in round three. Vladimir Klitschko, 32 out of 72 total punches. 24 of those connects were jabs. Brewster landing only three of nine power shots, having trouble getting past the long jab. Harold Letterman, how do you score it through three? Look at Jim, 30 to 27, three rounds to nothing, Vladimir Klitschko. Jim, I mean, this is clean punching. That's, I mean, you got to give him credit for the three rounds for clean, effective punching. But Jim, Lennox Lewis, the former heavyweight champion, talks about keeping that perfect distance. He's absolutely correct. That's what the judges call ring generalship. You keep the guy exactly where you want to keep him in the ring. And one last thing, what is Buddy McGirt yelling catch and go? Does anybody know what that means? Sounds like a football term. Catch and go might mean if you get hit, that's the time you're supposed to go. No, it actually means catch it, catch the, the punches with your gloves, slide off of it, and try and catch your opponent back before he gets out of range. Vladimir Klitschko, by his own account, was too cautious with the right hand in his seventh round knockout of Calvin Brock last November in New York. He did not even throw a right hand in his title defense earlier this year against Ray Austin here in Germany. Tonight, he's throwing right hand leads in abundance. And this makes him a more dangerous fighter than ever before. Because at the moment, with Lennox Lewis retired, Vladimir probably has the best right hand in the division. Well, we're gonna, we're gonna probably see it right now because he's winding up to throw it. He's, he's, in, he's in punching distance of, of Lehman Brewster. And, you know, Lehman definitely should keep that left hand up because he needs that left hand to, to protect against Klitschko's right hand. Uh, thinks that he can win this fight with one punch or at least change it. And that's what he's looking for or he's conceding because he is not putting the pressure on Klitschko that he did in the first fight. He also looks a bit winded. Looks more than a bit winded. And fascinatingly, given Brewster's background as a tough guy and a resilient fighter who can weather the storm, Buddy McGirt said to him after three rounds, I'm not going to let you just stand there and take punishment. You've got to start doing something which he's supposed to, and what he's supposed to be doing is 
giving Klitschko a lot more pressure, pushing him up against the ropes. Now he lands a left hook. Not waiting for, for Klitschko to start everything. Him, him, he needs to start something. This is what he wants. He has to go for it. But he's being beaten to the punch over and over and over by a longer, taller, sharper puncher. But let's remember, Klitschko won 14 of the first 15 minutes of the last fight and lost the fight. Well, he's just won 12 of the first 12 here. <laughs> Repeating the feat. Fighting a good fight. He hasn't even hit you with a punch yet. Okay. Jab is working beautiful. Pretty soon you're gonna about knock him out with a jab if you don't stop. So what round is this coming up here? Is it the sixth round? Well, I said he wouldn't go over seven originally at the prediction. It looked like he's going to have, this is about six to jab. He's about finished with just a jab alone. Pretty soon. You, you got to push go. it. You're too busy looking for the one punch. Don't worry about the one punch, okay? Keep that pressure on him. Don't go backwards, Damon. You got to stay low. Don't slip this way. You got to stay here. You catch him, you slip You heard Buddy McGirt? confirm what we thought earlier you're looking for one punch he's telling Brewster keep working the jab keep working, pumping it driving it driving it copy box numbers through the first full round Vladimir Klitschko 100 jabs landed in four rounds out of 226 thrown that means he's throwing 56 jabs per round an extraordinary output Brewster Landing 21 of power, uh, 24, 21 of 44 power shots. Not enough to create the pressure he wanted to turn the fight in his direction. First is one of these guys, when it's tough in there, he's one of these guys, when it's tough, the tough get going. There's the uppercut for the first time. Vladimir Klitschko, who idolizes now the Lennox Lewis uppercut, emulating it there for the first time in the fight. And he drove Brewster into the ropes with the right hand. Now, Lehman Brewster seems to feel more urgency than before about going forward and creating pressure. Lisco just missing with a right hand that was designed to finish the fight. Brewster has a great chin. He's been knocked down only once in his professional career. That was by Klitschko in the fourth round in Las Vegas. Crowd chanting, Klitschko, Klitschko. This is a measured, stalking style by Klitschko. We don't see any sign of panic, of urgency. He's just fighting his fight and daring Brewster to make him not be able to fight his fight. And that's what Brewster's doing right now, allowing Klitschko to fight his fight. The good thing that he's not getting hit with any heavy right hand shots by Klitschko at the moment, but the fact that he's throwing so many jabs, the right hand's gonna find its mark pretty soon. The first of those two right hands was heavier than Brewster might like it to be. But Klitschko hasn't yet landed that home run shot of the kind that flipped Calvin Brock onto his face in Madison Square Garden. Knockout with the left hook as well. Although again, Brewster has a great chin and just may be able to keep taking the punishment. See, Brewster looks like he's prepared to take that right hand. He's rolling off it very well. This is when Klitschko should be coming back with that left hook after that right hand.
You hear me? Now answer one question for me. You got to be honest. Do you, are you feeling it? Yes or no? Yes, I'm feeling it. Here, spit this. Huh? I'm feeling it. Are you feeling like you can go on? Spit this. Spit this. Huh? Mm -hmm. I'm going to give you one more round, Lamar. I'm not going to see you take no shots. You hear me? Spit this. Hey. Give me one more round to show me you can do what we worked on. If not, baby, I'm going to stop it. You hear me? Hey. Okay? Now let's try to, to drive with the jab now, okay? Try to start pushing a little harder with the jab. We're hitting like this. Try to see if you can, you can drive. It's a little bit more force to just drive them off balance with the jab. It's a little bit more. Change it up. Lennox, do you believe McGirt would stop the fight if we had another round like the ones we've had? I think he's saying that to motivate him, motivate Brewster to show Brewster, listen, he's going to stop the fight. Most boxers don't like hearing that, so they change their approach about the next round, and I'm sure you're going to see Lehman Brewster changing his, his approach about this round. Or is he saying that as a clear indication that part of his mandate, his self-accepted mandate, is to try to protect Lehman Brewster's surgically prepared left eye and not allow that left eye to be further damaged. Well, every time you get hit, there's always that risk of getting injured, and you, you want to not get hit in there. And if you're getting hit, then you might get hurt. And I think... Well, I don't see any sign that Brewster has favored his eye or having any problem with it as yet. I'm not sure that we would see any sign, Larry. How would we know? I mean, he's getting hit. He gets hit anyway, regardless of whether his eye is bothering him. He's never been a difficult target for opponents. He wins with his will. Well, he did say that when he fought Lyakovich, that he had a problem with, with his depth perception. But, of course, you didn't know watching the fight that he had injured his eye in that way. Incidentally, through fewer than five rounds, Klitschko landed more jabs than have ever been landed against Lehman Brewster in any fight of any distance, even 12 rounds. I haven't seen a left hook from Lehman Brewster yet, and I know that's his honey punch, but he hasn't attempted or thrown a big one yet. And when his eye was damaged against Lyakovich, he said that the big there was. The data was that he couldn't land his left hook at all. There he tried one and just missed. Klitschko again, popping Brewster repeatedly with the jab. And now there's a lot of yelling from Lehman Brewster's corner as they try to motivate their man. Brewster seemed, to go down. Down. Brewster seemed to go down from fatigue at that point. Well, to be fair, Klitschko was leaning on his back, and it's always better to go down than to try and lift up 140, I mean, 245 pounds. Vladimir landed a very sharp right cross, and then wrapped Brewster up inside. Now he goes back to peppering Brewster with the jab. It's been a very easy first six rounds so far for Vladimir Klitschko. There's swelling outside Brewster's left eye now. And he gets hit with another right hand. That one was blocked. I think it was the sheer power that really knocked him back. We can't tell yet whether Vladimir has added any steel to the alleged glass in his jaw, but we certainly can tell that I don't like he is a better you defensive shot, fighter. Baby. Okay? I'm going to pull the plug, Lehman. Come on. Okay? Talk to me, baby. Come on, buddy. I'm going to pull the plug. I'm going to pull the plug, baby. I know, you, I know you're trying. It's not there. All right. You hear me? You hear me? Yeah. I'm not going to let you get to keep hitting with them shots. All right? All right? Okay? That's it, baby. That's it. Choke He's That's calling it, the They're fight. Throw in the towel right now. Referee. Buddy That's McGirt. That's Buddy That's McGirt stops the fight. That's it, gang. An anticlimactic knockout, if ever there was one. A merciful exit for Lehman Brewster, provided by his trainer, Buddy McGirt. All right, baby, it was your night. You Thank you very much. It, man. You deserve it. Thank you very much. I wish Hold you it up.
I wish all you all the best. Thank, thank you, buddy. You, all right, thank, you. You thank you. Thank um, you. Excuse me. <laughs> I lost the question. <laughs> Would you like to ask again? Um, based on this fight versus the first okay. fight, tell us how you think you have improved as a fighter. I believe that you can make better judgment or audience can make better that judgment than I than myself. But I just, from my point of view, I can say that I feel like a fish in the water. I feel very confident. I feel that I, I can be very consistent in my performance. And especially, I love what I do. When you go in the ring, I'm happy about that. I'm not struggling, I'm not surviving. I don't need to do it. I do it because I love it and I want it. Then that leads to this issue. Le Lamont Brewster and others believe that American heavyweights who have come from poverty are, are tougher, harder men. And it's hard for them to believe that someone like yourself who doesn't have to fight because you're educated, because you've made a lot of money, can't be as hard and tough as them. How do you answer that? I believe, I believe this is not about nationality. We have great fighters all over the world. And this is their all own and personal quality, how they perform. And I think nationality, it's not such a big matter. Look at this, how many great athletes around the world and people in the United States really admire them. And they go to watch their fights or their, their games. Who would you like to fight next? Who, who would you like to fight me is next? That's saying that you would like to get a unification fight if you could. Is that correct? I will give everything what's possible. I, I will not give it up. I was trying to accomplish it in the past year, and so hopefully next fight will be something of like that. Does this make you feel more like a champion, or do you still feel you have to unify titles before you can be considered by yourself to be the champion? No, I'm not there where I want to be. That's it, and um, I'm going to accomplish it. I'm 31, and I think I have a couple of more successful years in my life. But you make judgment. You're an experienced guy, and I would love to get judgment from yourself, from yourself. I'll see if I can come up with something. Right. Thank you, Vladimir.